Hi, I'm Sarah with the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio. Maybe you've heard the phrase cutting on the bias used in the sewing world and you didn't quite know what that meant. Well, I'm here today to help explain. I'll show you the ins and outs of cutting fabric on the bias. And then I'll show you how to use that knowledge to create custom bias tape and piping. So first, let me begin by explaining what it means to cut on the bias. Cutting your fabric on the bias means you are cutting it at a 45 degree angle where your fabric is most stretchy. You can see here on my fabric that when I try to stretch it just anywhere, it doesn't have much give to it. But when I try it at this 45 degree angle, it does. You can use this fabric cut on the 45 degree angle to make bias tape. What is bias tape and why would you use it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Bias tape is a narrow piece of fabric cut on the bias and folded so it can be used as a binding, trim, or for decoration. You would typically use bias tape in place of a normal hem around anything with a curve, such as a neckline or armholes on a garment. Because bias tape stretches, it works around curves and corners smoothly, giving your project a professional look, unlike normal hems that tend to bunch or pull around curved areas. Bias tape also makes a wonderful edging or binding for multiple layers of fabric, like on a quilt or blanket. Now let's go over the different kinds of bias tape. To start, there are two kinds of bias tape, single fold and double fold. You'll also notice that a double fold is just like a single fold, except it's been folded in half. Now I'll show you how to calculate the width you need to cut out your fabric so you get the correct size bias tape. All it takes is a little simple multiplication. To get your starting width for single fold bias tape, you just multiply the final width you want to make by two. For the double fold, you would just multiply the final width you want to make by four. Simple as that. Just to help you understand, I'm going to go through the steps to make one inch single fold bias tape. So first we need to determine our starting fabric width. I want my finished single fold size to be one inch. So I'll just multiply that by two, giving me a starting size of two inches. Now that we have that measurement, what we're going to do next is find and cut along the bias of the fabric. So let me show you an easy way to do that. Iron your fabric and lay it out flat. Bring the top left corner down so it meets the bottom edge and forms a triangle. Trim off the excess fabric on this side so all you're left with is a triangle shape. Now fold the triangle corner to corner again. This will just make it easier and quicker when cutting your strips. Then rotate your fabric like this. You'll also need to go ahead and trim off your folds from this outer edge. So just trim about an eighth or a quarter inch here, just enough to cut only the folds off. Flip your fabric over, then you can just use the markings on your grid ruler to measure two inches and cut. Continue cutting strips by measuring two inches from the previous cut until you've cut almost all the fabric. I usually stop about here because the strips cut from this inner corner are really too small to use for bias tape. So just save that corner for a rainy day project. Once you have all your strips cut, you're ready to connect them together. Just a quick tip. When laying them out, try to vary the lengths of your strips. Don't do all the long ones and then all the short ones. This is so you don't end up with an area that has a bunch of seams close together on your project. So let's get started. If needed, begin by repressing all of your pieces so they lay nice and flat for this next part. Once that's done, you'll begin by laying your pieces together, front sides facing inward, crossing over one another like this. If you have a lined cutting mat like I do, use the lines in the mat to help line up the strips nice and straight. We're going to be sewing across diagonally from this top corner to this bottom corner. So we need to pin it in place, also going diagonally, but in the opposite direction that you'll be sewing. Doing it this way allows the fabric to fold correctly when the pieces are sewn together. With your machine set to a straight stitch, sew from corner to corner. There's no need to backstitch these pieces because we want to keep them from getting too bulky and the stitches will be secured when we sew these pieces into our project. Now that they're sewn together, trim off the excess fabric at the seam 
leaving about an eighth of an inch and snip off the little extra pieces on the sides to get rid of extra bulk. Go ahead and sew all of your bias strips together using the same method until you have a piece long enough for your project. Now, just press all of your seams open and give the strips a good press as well, and we're all prepped for the next step. Now that you have all your strips sewn together, you're ready for what I consider the fun part. This little tool is called a bias tape maker and will help you easily and quickly fold your strips into single fold bias tape. Because I've cut my strips for one inch single fold, I have the bias tape maker for that size. But if you're making a size other than one inch single fold, we do carry these tools in other sizes. Keep in mind that the size indicated on the package is for single fold bias tape, but just one additional fold turns it into double fold bias tape. You'll start by inserting the end of one of your strips into the bias tape maker. If you're having trouble getting the fabric to push through, just use a seam ripper or pin to pull it out about an inch and a half. Now just start pressing the folds down as the fabric comes through the tool. Move along about an inch at a time until you've done the entire strip. And now you have custom one inch single fold bias tape. Single fold is useful as a trim or decoration, but double fold bias tape is actually more popular because it can be used on more projects, like binding on a quilt or blanket, finishing out a neckline, and more. So now let's turn our one inch single fold bias tape into half inch double fold bias tape. This part is so simple. All you need to do is just fold your bias tape in half. But I have an excellent tip for you. Fold it so that the front side is slightly shorter than the back side as you're pressing it into place. Doing this ensures that when you use it as edging on a project, that every stitch goes through and catches the back side of the bias tape. If the tape has been folded to where the front and back are the same size, many times you'll have some stitches that miss catching on the back side of the bias tape, especially if you're sewing multiple layers together. Just don't forget to add it to your project with the shorter side towards the front. Are you so excited? Making your own custom bias tape really is so simple and it just customizes your project that much more. Now remember back at the beginning of the video when I told you I'd also show you how to make custom piping? Well, we're ready for that now. Piping really is great because you can use it in clothing, upholstery, or to give a pillow that extra professional touch. First, I'll show you an easy way to find the width you need to cut out your bias strips based on the size of cording you'll be using. Wrap a small piece of scrap material around your cording. Keeping it wrapped tightly, measure out your seam allowance. For this, I'll just use half an inch. Make a small cut through both sides of the fabric right at that half inch mark. Now, unwrap the cording and lay the piece of fabric out flat. Measure the width between your small cuts. Mine is measuring one and three quarter inches, so that's how wide I need to cut my bias strips. Now, I've already cut my strips to one and three quarter inches and I've sewn them together as before. But instead of ironing them into bias tape, I'm going to add some cording to make piping. What we're going to do here is just wrap our bias strip around the cording until the two edges match up. Now clip it together, placing the clips over the cording so it doesn't move. You'll also notice that I'm placing the clips over the cording because they have this little notch that holds the cording nice and flat as I sew. Now that it's all clipped, are you ready to start sewing? For this part, you'll need to use a zipper foot, so go ahead and swap that out now, and make sure that your needle is aligned with the left side of the foot. Using a zipper foot will allow us to sew right up next to the cording. You could also buy a piping foot made specifically for this purpose. A piping foot makes it super easy, but since most machines come with a zipper foot, that's the one I'll show you how to use. Sew your piping together, keeping your stitches just to the right of the cord. It doesn't have to be too snug up against it at this point because typically you'll be putting another line of stitches here when you sew the finished piping into your project. Once you've sewn down the full length of the cord, just trim off any excess and it's ready for your next piping project. Well, that's all for today, guys. Be sure and check out our other sewing videos and choose a project where you can add your own handmade bias tape and piping. Have fun and remember to join me here next time at the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio.